Hey guys, Prince of Mastodon here, and uh, I'm going to show you some live commentary from the uh, the new generation uh, Rome Total War 15k CW CWB tournament hosted by Gene Rombo of Antwerp of the LOA clan. And again, this tournament was designed for uh, newer players. That doesn't mean you have to be completely new, but it does mean you have to be new-ish. So that said, let's look at the two players here. We have uh, Stefan Dusan of the RV clan. He's only been playing multiplayer for a few months, so he still qualifies as a newish uh, player. And then we have Garavan commanding Pontus, and from what I understand, Garavan is actually very new to the multiplayer scene. And uh, I've heard that he has made really big leaps and bounds in learning how to play multiplayer against other humans, so I'm very excited to watch how he performs in this fight. So, Seleucid vs. Pontus battle, let's go see how this action goes down. Oh, in the back we have uh, Paris spectating as Spain. So let's look at Garvan's army. Looks like he has six units of these archers. They appear to be gold gold. Uh, two units of uh, Javcav. They are called Pontic Light Cav, of course. Ooh, four units of the Scythe Chariots. And as you guys know, the Scythe Chariots are very fragile and very dangerous to whoever wields them because they can just as likely turn on you as they are likely to fight the enemy, so that's going to be really interesting to see. Two units of Chariot Archers, so in CWB you can only have two uh, Chariot Archers or two Horse Archers in your army, because they are considered pretty abusive past that limit. Then finally he has uh, five units of Bronze Shield Pikes, and they are gold gold it looks like, so that's going to be a strong force to reckon with. Let's go look at uh, Dusan's uh, Seleucid army here. Looks like he has uh, six units of these archers. I'm trying to look at the upgrades for one of them. Looks like uh, gold gold for that one. Uh, four units of silver shield legionaries appear to be uh, gold gold. And typically you would want to uh, not bring so many legionaries against a pike faction, but he did offer that. He does have two pikes though. They are uh, levy pikes, no upgrades. Then for his uh, cavalry force, I see. Ooh. Are these all chariots? You know what that means, right? Seleucids only have one chariot type, and that is the um, size chariots. So both sides are rocking out a significant amount of uh, size chariots, and that is going to be interesting to see who can control their uh, their chariots uh, better. Oh, look at this! We had some hidden units here. I like it. So. Uh, Stefan Dusan has uh, taken out two units of uh, Militia Cav. These guys are appearing some... Uh, they're rocking out some pretty good upgrades. So during the skirmish phase, um, you want to take out enemy archers when you can. So it looks like Dusan uh, drew first blood with this with this little charge. Uh, but the Pontic uh, Light Cav of Garavan scared them away. But right now, the Seleucids have a huge edge in the skirmish. They still have all of their archers. Look at that. Garavan's going to try to uh, equalize, but he is uh, warded off by by Dusan's uh, Militia Cav. But Pontus is down to two archers here, and the Chariot Archers. So the one thing that uh, Garavan has going for his army, in terms of missiles, are these Chariot Archers. I don't think that might- I don't think that's going to be enough to to beat the, uh, the six Seleucid Archers in missile combat. But Skirmishing isn't the only uh, dimension to a CWB battle. There's other ways to strike too. Clearly, the, uh, they both are rocking out infantry. I think Garavan has superior infantry with the bronze, uh, the bronze shields who are gold gold. I want to tell you right now, I am using face cam because Fraps decided not to work anymore for Rome Total War when I do replays. It lagged way too much. I think it had to do with the fact that I uh, downloaded Bandicam this and was using it for Mad Max. One of those components messed up my, my fraps for recording Rome Total War replays, so sorry about this. I'll try to find a fix for it. Now it's very interesting. Now, I was looking at these names. Garva, I never heard of that name before. Usually I, I hear these names and I can typically attribute it to some historical character or some movie character, but Garva I never heard of. I looked it up. Um, I saw a Twitch account with that name, and I also saw that there was a comic book with that name, Garuvan. And uh, Stefan Dusan, it's just a name, but 
uh, Dusan, it reminds me of the Hellenistic commander, Antigonus III Dosan. So, whenever I see uh, Stefan Dusan in the lobby, I always think Antigonus because of that. Alright, there is a development on this side. Ooh, Dusan was able to strike out with his Militia Cav, scared away some Pontic Light Cav, and he's going to charge forward here. And there's no more archers to attack for, uh, for Stefan. But he is going to go for blood against these Pontic Lycav. He is not backing down. He's going to keep going for him. Oh, there are some archers over here, actually. Not many, though. <laughs> not many at all. So yeah, with the phase cam, it, it will lag a little bit. I, I do apologize, but I think you can see what's happening on screen. Man, uh, Dusan really wants these uh, Pontic Lycav. Now, it's going to tire his men. I, I, I probably would have just sent maybe one Militia Cav to chase after him, if that's what he wanted to do. Because one of these would be enough to take on these guys. But uh, we shall see what happens. Now, the chariots of Pontus are rushing forward to strike these Silver Shirt Legionaries. Are they going to get through Gold Gold Legionaries? I don't know. Let's say they run amok. They're going to cause a lot of damage here if they do run amok. And they are running amok. Actually, yeah. One does run amok. There is a big chariot fight on the side, guys. This is something you don't see too, too often, are chariot battles in Total War. Man, I've never seen so many uh, sized chariots in one battle. I love it. Oh man, they are all running amok, guys. We got Pontic chariots running amok and Seleucid chariots running amok. I, I kind of lost track of who is who. As I said, this battle could boil down to who can control their chariots better. They've both lost control of their chariots. So now it's going to be basically an infantry fight. If it's an infantry fight, an infantry fight, I would give the edge to Pontus who has the uh, the gold gold bronze shields. Uh, mind you, the legionaries can still toss Pila, but once they're out of Pila, they will be at the mercy of those long pikes. And bronze shields are no pushovers. They are considered elite uh, pikemen. Now Garvon still has uh, chariots, but these are just chariot archers, but they still have a, uh, they're still pretty good. They're not melee strong like the other chariots, but they're at least stable, they won't run amok. And this is the fight that I think Pontus is going to win, even though his uh, phalanx is in loose formation, I think they can still take on these uh, legionaries. Try to look at the other sides of the battlefield. Uh, Dusan has um, archers and so does Garavon. But I don't think this frontal fight is going to go the way that Dusan hopes it will. It says they're winning. They might be winning right now, but these uh, these bronchos might be too strong for these uh, uh, legionaries. I I don't think the description's accurate here. It says they're winning over here. Winning. They're losing over here. Uh, bronchos are getting angles on these guys. Now, had these uh, Bronchos been in tight formation, it would have been no contest. But there are uh, legionaries breaking over here where um, Garavon had the angles on it. Oh, look at these chariots running amok. Who are they going to hit? Both sides, I think. Let's see who it hurts more, though. Oh, they flattened both sides. Again, uh, chariots running amok and elephants running amok, they do not discriminate. They will strike down anything. They don't care who they were previously employed by. Very interesting fight once both sides lost their chariots. I kind of expected that. Especially when I saw both chariots coming at each other like that. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a cataclysmic event and uh, no one's going to survive that. But I still think uh, Pontus has the edge now with these uh, gold gold bronze shields. Although, I didn't see this. Dusan has somehow kept his archers alive. They were chasing uh, Pontic archers down. But they are now shooting the backs of... Well, no, they're not shooting anyone in the back, except for, for their own guys. So Lucid is winning the infantry fight. I mean, of course, it's not optimal to be in loose formation at the Phalanx. But I still thought the uh, Broad Shields would, would tear these Legionaries apart. 
I mean, it's definitely not over yet. They're, they're both rocking out some good good amount of uh, troops. Oh, but look at these guys. Are they out of ammo? Let me see. They still have ammo. I think they're going to shoot the, the sides, the flanks of these bronze shields. If they do, that's four units doing focus fire on these guys. This, this could go really bad. Pontus needs to stop this from happening. I don't think he has the uh, the personnel to do it though, because Dusan still has cavalry to uh, protect his archers. Oh, that's bad. That's rough. See how they got shot from the flanks here. The only way these guys have a chance now is to the destroy these uh, legionaries like and then turn child. immediately and face now the archers. But right now the they are outmaneuvered. Oh, but they did break the enemy commander. Let's see what happens. They're about to get flank charged here by Militia Cav. Not the best for charging, but not bad, given the circumstances. And they stopped the flanking charge. Oh, this is exciting, guys. It is not the way... It's not going the way I thought it was going to go. Like, I thought Pontus would just own this situation. They are, uh... They're surviving right now, somehow. They were outmaneuvered completely, but they are somehow surviving this. And I see a lot of, uh, routing... Lucid units here. Wow. I remember, um, in case you're new, these red bannered blinky things, they are under no one's control. Ooh, Pontus has lost a unit. Oh man, it's coming down to the wire. Pontus has the advantage of having his commander still. I think. Is he? Yeah, there he is. He does not dress like a Hellenistic uh, leader in this game, but clearly Pontus has some Hellenistic uh, influences via the um, the uh, Saritsas. Oh wow! This is exciting, guys. Seleucus still has cab, not much, but they're exhausted. Oh, and, and Pontus has brought their cab back. Oh, I think Pontus is gonna win this. Well, I, I, I figured Pontus was going to win it, but I didn't think it was going to be like this, because it looked like Pontus was going to lose at the end when they were outflanked by the Cavs and by the Seleucid Archers. I didn't think they would pull it off then. So, surprise, surprise. Yeah, if these Archers get destroyed by the Cavs, that's pretty much all. Yeah, that's it. Wow. That was... Surprising, and that was amazing. I think uh, the Spanish observer has uh, admitted defeat. No, he hasn't. He's still there. Well, clearly, um, uh, Pontus did win the fight. That was crazy, guys. That was super crazy. I liked how both sides, you know, they were pulling moves out of their sleeves that I didn't think they they could still pull, and it turned into an exciting battle. Like like um, you, you know, once both sides lost their uh, their their chariots, you know, I, I figured, hey, Pontus has the supreme edge in infantry, but then Seleucus proved that that wasn't 100% but it did look like uh, Seleucids were catching up on infantry fight and then especially towards the end when the Seleucids were um, surrounding the, those two bronze shields it didn't look good for Pontus at all but uh, Pontus pulled that that victory out these guys this general unit man they are heroes these guys are total heroes they they somehow survived the uh, the legionaries they survived getting shot in the back they survived those militia cabs hitting them from behind too. Man, that was that was a tale that could be told by by Xenophone, Herodotus, Plutarch. All right, so uh, that was from the round of 16. Uh, the next set of replays I'm going to show you from this tournament are going to be from the semifinals. So I'm excited to show you those battles. I have not seen any of these battles. I always do the commentary as I watch it, so that you guys get real genuine um, commentary for me. I won't know who wins these fights. 